Hey everyone, uh, I'm talking today about the game engine that I've been working on. Um, in the last video I had a 3D engine that was pretty far along, but um, I dropped that for this 2D version. Um, and they're, they're pretty similar in what, what I want to do with them, uh, but uh, I'm not smart enough to do 3D, I don't think. All the matrices and quaternions were breaking my brain. Um, and plus 2D's uh, it's easier to code for, but I also think I can get better performance with all the simulation kind of stuff I want to do. So th what this game is going to be about is um, it's sort of like Minecraft in that survival crafting genre, um, but less focus on building and more focus on survival and uh, interaction with other characters. I want to have lots of other characters, lots of life in the world. Uh, most of it going to be computer controlled, uh, otherwise known as bots. Um, so I'm just gonna, I don't have any playable stuff here, it's nothing fun yet, um, but it is uh, the beginnings of an engine and it's, uh, uh, it's something to look at. Um, so I'm going to show you where it's going. Uh, so you see on the uh, panel over here uh, some different blocks that I can place. Um, and in the normal game, uh, your character would have to, you know, collect resources to build these different things. But this is just the editor for now. Um, and you can see you can, you can place them here and uh, you know if I were to close the game and open it back up they, the same blocks would be there the save and load is working um, one of the key features in the game is uh, well, I don't want to do that yet yeah I do uh, is the vision system and the lighting system so you can see I turned on shadows and it's really hard to see uh, I'm gonna lay a campfire down here so you can see sort of where we're going with the lighting um, so there's two things to note here. First is the lighting. You can see how the character gets dimmer as he gets away from the campfire. Um, but the second thing is the, this black area over here. You can see how that's forming as I move over here. That's because the character can't see past this wall here. Um, and so unlike most top-down 2D games, uh, I'm actually blacking out the whole area that the character can't see. Um, and so I have a lot of debug visualizations. I'll show you, show you one of the first ones here. And this is the vision beams. This is how I calculate what the player can and can't see. And uh, players won't be able to turn this on in the normal game. Uh, but it is just for me to be able to uh, debug that part of the engine. But you can see after I uh, leave an area, it doesn't immediately fade to black, but it'll eventually fade because you can't see it anymore. Okay. Um, so I'm going to come down here, uh, so there's, there'll be a day-night cycle, right now it's nighttime. if it were daytime, uh, you know, it'd be bright out, but you'd still have the blackouts because of lack of vision. Um, so I'm going to come inside real quick, and you can see inside is dark even though it's daytime. And I'm going to work my way into this little fortress that I've built here uh, before I got started. And come down here and you can see how you can't really tell where things are. You can you have this faint outline of or uh, faint lighting around uh, your character. So you can kind of see your feet but that's about it. And if I drop down a, a campfire then suddenly, suddenly everything's illuminated. Um, so that's the basics of the lighting and vision system. Um, if uh, the lighting can actually be blocked, so if I were to put something in front of the campfire, you can see that the light still gets behind this block, but it's it's dimmer because it's uh, being partially blocked. And if we were to put something, you know, all the way around the campfire, um, it'd be very dim, uh, except for this little entrance that we left. Okay. So I'm going to turn the shadows back off. Um, talk a little bit about pathing. Uh, so for this part I'm going to unlock the camera from the character and I'm also going to freeze the character in place and show you the path uh, debug visualization. So here's the path that the character is currently on and if it goes around a corner you can see it uh, will create new waypoints in the path and if it gets to the point where it's more advantageous to take another path it'll switch entirely. Um, so you can see if I try to go out here, it plans a path all the way back through that uh, tunnel that we came through. Um, and this is the hardest part of all the stuff that I've been doing recently. 
because I, I wanted path planning to you know be really smooth and uh, not jarring, but I also wanted it to be very efficient because I want to have lots and lots of uh, computer controlled entities inside the game. Um, and I want them interacting all the time even when you're nowhere near them. Um, I, I want the bots to you know have their own uh, desires, their goals, make decisions on their own, take actions. Um, um, it's probably too ambitious, but I'm even thinking I want the bots to talk to each other. <laughs> Um, all while you're, you might not even be anywhere close. Um, so one one of the big parts of the path planning system was to make it efficient. Um, uh, often when uh, you're doing path planning in a game, you use an algorithm called A star to to find the path efficiently. Um, and I'm doing that here, but I, I have a different approach to it slightly. Normally you do this A star algorithm through each little uh, cell uh, in this big grid. Um, but I wanted it to be more efficient so what I did is I made bigger cells sort of I call them regions um, this is another debug visualization it uh, it is not normally uh, available in the game um, it's just for me to debug stuff uh, each region is an area that's guaranteed to have no obstacles in it whatsoever so if you're in a region and the thing you want to get to is in that same region you can just make a beeline for it you don't have to even uh, do any kind of fancy path planning um, and the and then that a star algorithm I was talking about actually operates at the region level and it never goes down to the cell level um, and that, that's how the the pathing is able to be extremely efficient and if I zoom all the way out here you can see what, what I'm calling a chunk barring that term from Minecraft um, and uh, once I have multiple chunks in the game, there'll be uh, another tier where the plans are, or the paths are planned at the chunk level, and then at the region level. Um, let's see. What else got here? Um, so I think that's about it. Um, next video, I'll probably have a whole lot of bots in the game. I'll probably have uh, new artwork and that kind of thing. Um, Thanks for watching.